Developmental Screening, Sorting It All Out. Presented by Dr. Laura Thornton. Dr. Thornton is a PhD in, in applied developmental psychologist whose work has focused both on typical and atypical emotional development of children from infancy to young adulthood. Dr. Thornton joined the Bureau of Family Health as a developmental screening coordinator in June of 2019, where she leads the developmental screening initiative for the state of Louisiana. Currently, Dr. Thornton is expanding developmental screening implementation, training, and support by promoting the Bureau of Family Health online toolkit for pediatric providers to access training materials and receive coaching support for developmental screening. Dr. Thornton also serves as an ACT Early Ambassador for the state of Louisiana, promoting parent-engaged developmental monitoring through the CDC's Learn the Signs ACT Early materials. Dr. Thornton, it's yours. Thank you so much, Ashley. Uh, uh, welcome, everyone. I know that everything is a whole lot right now, so I just want to say thank you for taking the time out of your day to attend and uh, being a part of this symposium is uh, a really kind of great way to make sure that you are up to date on all of the things that are happening and what you can be doing. As I think uh, many of us have realized or it has emphasized even more throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, mental health, both children and adults, is so critical and important um, throughout all of this. So I just want to say a big old thanks uh, for everyone who is participating as a participant today and all of our panelists as well. So indeed, I am Dr. Laura Thornton. I am a developmental psychologist by training and work in the Bureau of Family Health. I also go around talking to folks about the Learn the Signs Act early materials a great deal. And so if you're interested in learning more about that, um, just let me know. And I will also try and drop some links uh, for that as well in the chat. So uh, let me see if the nope, video is still not working, but that's okay. So I will just go ahead and dive right on in. Feel free to put questions in the chat throughout. Uh, and I will either try to get to them as we're kind of going through them or definitely all together at the end. Hope you have a, a nice tea or coffee sitting around or some snacks because I know that sitting at like this for long periods of time uh, can be a challenge, especially if you're used to bouncing around clinics all day long. Again, Thank you so much for hanging in there. And I have no relevant financial relationships uh, to disclose for this activity. So to give a highlight on what kind of the goals I have for this session are that you as a participant will be able to successfully navigate the AAP's screeningtime.org website for information on screening tools beyond those included in the Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines. Be able to navigate and utilize online training for the Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines, uh, recommended autism screening tool, the modified checklist for autism and toddlers revised with follow-up or MCHAT, and feel comfortable using the developmental screening uh, referral guides with families after screens for general social emotional development or autism indicates a potential need for further evaluation or services. So kind of teasing all of these things apart and really what we wanted to do in this particular session is, uh, you know, tomorrow I'm going to be talking really specifically about what our online uh, toolkit can provide and what our implementation training and support can provide. But we know that sometimes there's a lot of different information coming at you. And so trying to figure out and sort out what are all of your options is really important and trying to help kind of sift through them. So we 
as all things, and this being the American Academy of Pediatrics chapter, we really wanted to focus on what AAP provides and what you can um, access really easily there, because I know so many folks don't necessarily have the time to sit down and think about this and tootle around a website. So this is really trying to hit all of those high points so that um, you know exactly where to go, what to find and what you can get there. So trying to figure out who and when to screen, what needs to be happening. Uh, this can all be done at the screeningtime.org website. And uh, importantly, last year, or time is weird, so it may have been very early 2021, is that uh, Louisiana Medicaid, EPSTT, adopted the AAP's Bright Futures uh, periodicity. There were a couple of minor exceptions, but um, not really when it came to developmental screening. It was more kind of going out to the age of 21 or uh, other questions around um, some slight nuances. And as hopefully many of you know, uh, in March, Louisiana Medicaid announced uh, that they would begin reimbursing for general development screens, autism screens, and perinatal depression screens for either uh, caregiver, either birthing parent or a non-birthing parent as well. And so this was announced in March, but is uh, practically implemented through January 1st of this year. And so you may see things kind of rolling in if you already kind of had all of those visits tagged with the particular billing codes, or this may be relatively new news for you. And so it provides some additional opportunities for reimbursement for doing the things that uh, AAP recommends and uh, Louisiana Medicaid EPSTT. So it's nice that they're equivalent now and that there is some additional reimbursement coming your way. And general development and autism use both the 96110 code and are reimbursed for $10. And then uh, perinatal depression screening uses the 96161 code with a reimbursement value of $8 and 14 cents. So digging a little bit more into what you can find when you go to the screeningtime.org website, you can find a wide variety of tools and it's very similar to what you might find if you go through the supplemental tables of uh, the latest clinical policies uh, that AAP has put out on that. But trying to dig through supplemental tables or remember what's in all of those can be a lot. So this is a really easy way to go find all of that information. So they've kind of split up the website to be able to search through tools and it has key information like what languages something is available in, what is the cost, what domains are covered. So is this really autism focused? Is this uh, more social emotional or social determinants of health or barriers to health? And what are the number of items? Is this like a two item measure like the PHQ2 or is this, <clears throat> pardon me, 40 items? So you have a better idea of how long this potentially might take. And what's really nice about it is you can filter and look for things, say, looking at general development specifically. All right, so went on mute there to take a sip of water and uh, try and clear my throat. So, for example, if you are pulling out all of the kind of general development uh, questionnaires, you will see not only ages and stages questionnaire, third edition, which uh, 
as we'll cover briefly, is our main recommended tool from the Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines, but you'll also see a variety of other tools. Uh, and this is often important to know that there are other things out there besides the Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines, and that we want to make sure that you all have access to support uh, for all of these tools as well through AP screening time. So it may be things along the lines of the parent's evaluation of developmental status and uh, the PEDS, but specifically uh, developmental milestones and kind of outlines all of those costs. And if you click on the view more part, you will be able to go directly to the websites for each of those surveys. So it's a nice high level overview and then uh, lets you dig a little bit more into it if you are wanting that. Another key portion of the Screening Time website is a no-cost uh, CME MOC Part 2, which is for 3.5 hours. And this is really nice in that if you're looking for even more uh, CME or MOC credits, that this is really kind of working through how to potentially integrate this workflow into your practice and walks you through all of the steps and things that you would need to consider. And it's an excellent way to kind of think through it all and make sure that you're getting your MOC credits as time goes along so that you are getting credit for all of the work that you're thinking through and putting that together. Perhaps the most innovative part of the Screening Time website is these virtual simulations. Uh, often when I am talking to providers, there's questions of, all right, but how do you navigate this particular situation? Because each patient is going to be unique. There's numerous different ways that any kind of conversation can go. And having some time and opportunity to kind of test it out and think about what you would say and how you would want to organize a conversation can be really helpful. And so these simulations cover kind of the key areas in which uh, screening is designed to be happening and that people are most often saying, hey, I'm not sure how to phrase this. You know, what do I connect with them on <clears throat> when it comes to the referral part? So they break it out into maternal depression and uh, an example in simulation that you can utilize is focusing on a two month well child visit, discussing maternal depression screening with parents and then child development at a 24 year old uh, or 20 month old, pardon me, uh, to discuss, discuss expressive language delays and uh, social determinants of health or barriers to health in terms of identifying any food security concerns, which has been a ongoing thing in particular during the COVID-19 pandemic is that a lot of folks are dealing with food insecurity and as food distributions um, kind of have shut down, uh, what to continue doing, making sure that folks are getting access to food that they need and fruits and vegetables, that this has kind of come up a lot for folks. So it's a nice way to kind of get some practice and kind of feel your way through that. Um, and I think it is particularly helpful for our residents or med students who are kind of gearing up for all of these things as well. So happy to answer any questions we have right now about uh, screening time in particular. The nice part about all of this is that they also have someone that you can email, you can get direct uh, implementation training and assistance from them as well. Uh, if you want someone who's a bit more local, 
obviously we'll talk a whole lot more about us here at the Bureau of Family Health and Developmental Screening Initiative. So one of the things so when we were, go for it. I, I was gonna say, um, there is a uh, participant, Ms. Smith. I've allowed you to unmute yourself. If you had a question, I saw your hand was raised. Are you able to ask your question? If not, go ahead and um, any questions you guys have for Dr. Thornton, if you wanna use the Q&A box, I will be, will be able to share those as well. Well, Laura, while we work on that, um, I guess if you want to go ahead and um, continue and if we're able to get um, unmuted, we'll ask that question. Thank you. Awesome, sounds good. Uh, so one of the things that our developmental screening initiative has really focused on is how do we take all of this information because we know it's a whole lot and try and distill it down into what we know has evidence for working for Louisiana children and families. And that really started and prompted the development of the Louisiana developmental screening guidelines. And this was initiated in 2015 by initially by a group of folks uh, called the Young Child Wellness Collaborative. And we recently did an update in 2020. And this is really kind of outlining and highlighting not only what AAP is recommending, so the general development screens at 9, 18, and 30 months, the autism screens at 18 and 20 months, the perinatal depression screening at 1, 2, 4, and 6 months, but also the social emotional components and the barriers to health components. Because both social emotional and barriers to health have been identified as key things that can be screened at almost any well child visit, uh, that there might be a helpful recommendation of, I know I can in time, well, when should I do it or when will it be most effective or most useful? And so we really wanted to highlight that aspect. So for social emotional development, we uh, endorse screening at the 18 month visit and then at the 30 month visit and uh, 36, 48, and 60 months. And this is really a byproduct of most social emotional screens really start taking things into account at around 18 months. So it's not that social emotional development isn't important in those months leading up to 18 months it's that most screening tools don't really cover that breadth and depth at that time period. And so it can be just as well served through the general development uh, screens, particularly the ASQ3, which has that kind of social communication aspect as well. And then for barriers to health, we utilize this language instead of social determinants of health, because barriers to health can be removed and surmounted through uh, dismantling uh, ongoing systems of oppression and kind of changing the landscape that we currently live in. So we emphasize screening for barriers to health at the same time as perinatal depression screening. Uh, so those one, two, four, and six month time periods and then at each year point. So having at least a yearly check-in on those barriers to health can be really important in uh, maintaining that relationship and building trust together to make sure that they're getting all of the resources that they need. We do also give some recommendations about the specific tools that have either been tested in Louisiana populations or samples that are very similar to Louisiana as, um, you know, 
when tool development happens, there are kind of sample effects. And if a sample is normalized on a sample that doesn't really reflect Louisiana children, then we're not doing uh, the greatest service to our Louisiana children as we can. And all of the tools that we recommend within these guidelines have at least evidence to show that they're effective and reliable within samples that are either from Louisiana or very similar to Louisiana samples. So for general development, we recommend the Ages and Stages Questionnaire 3rd Edition. We also recommend the Modified Checklist for Autism and Toddlers, the Revised with Follow-Up Version. For Perinatal Depression, we recommend the PHQ-2 and PHQ-9. And we also recommend the SEEK, the Safe Environment for Every Kid, because it contains the PHQ-2. For social emotional development, we recommend a brief early childhood screening assessment uh, developed in part by uh, Dr. Mary Margaret Gleason and the Ages and Stages Questionnaire Social Emotional uh, Second Edition. Then for barriers to health, again, it's SEEK, so Safe Environment for Every Kid, as well as the Survey of Wellbeing of Young Children, specifically those family questions. So where you can find the most information about these recommendations is within our online toolkit. And the kind of differences between the AAP's uh, methods and ours is we've tried to break it down into kind of three major steps that you, you can either kind of DIY it yourself or uh, work with us individually to whatever capacity you would like. So we focus on assessing and creating a plan. It's you know a challenge to make a change if you don't know what your end goal is and what you're aiming for. Step two, training your team, getting everyone on board, making sure that you can implement that particular screening tool with fidelity and have all of the resources you need to be able to connect people. Uh, when a screen indicates a need for further evaluation or services. And step three, implementing the plan. And this is the fun nitty gritty part that we really thrive at in trying to help with implementation science and making it all kind of go. The nice part about all of that is that we back it up with our implementation training and support so if you're very DIY, you're like, I got this. I know exactly what I want to do and how to make it happen. You can download all of the worksheets that we have that are designed to help you kind of through this process. But if you want a little bit more information, we have a variety of ways to get in touch with us and access all of the uh, experience and knowledge of not only our team, but others who have gone through this process as well. And then we also have our resources page, which is really rich in connecting you to not only national level resources of where do I find the screening time uh, link? Where do I find the physical developmental delay tool link? Where do I find links for other national level programs or an app? Uh, to track developmental milestones, but also who do I tell people to go to when someone needs uh, a further evaluation and screen for autism or needs a recommendation for uh, parent-child interaction therapy for social emotional development concerns, all of those things. So to take a little bit of an example and looking specifically at autism, what we have is a, on our kind of step two train your team area, we have it broken down into those five domains that we recommend people screen for and looking specifically at the autism uh, page, it's going to have all of the key information that you need. So those nice summaries that you get similar to what you find on screening time, but even more in terms of what 
age ranges does it apply to? And we are also adding continuously short training videos on these topics. We've previously had kind of 10 to 20 minute videos that cover not only everything about a particular tool, but how to go from you know, A to Z in implementation. And we realized people really uh, indicated to us that they preferred much shorter videos. So we're breaking it down into much smaller pieces. So we have a video uh, that is soon to be launched that is the basics of the MCHAT RF that covers all of those kind of key points in under five minutes. So that if you're like, hey, I need to think about this a little bit more, you can go watch the video, learn a bit, and make some decisions. And what we cover is everything from what is the particular screening tool, who and when do you need to be screening, why you should be screening, as well as where and when to screen in that clinical practice flow, and we can learn more information. And then we will also have particular videos just on how to score each one, because say you're training someone new on all of this, you may have given the manual and talked through this, but maybe you need a refresher or a kind of an introduction into what to expect when trying to uh, score a particular screen. So we cover, you know, that it's a two-part screen and we talk about how you go through scoring the initial screen, then how you conduct the follow-up flowcharts, what you do with all of that information, and again, where to learn more. And the nice part about all of this is we're continuously building this. So if there are particular topics that you want to see, put it in the chat, put it in an email to us of what you would like to see in a video covered uh, because we can respond in it and adapt to all of those things. So happy to answer questions now on the Louisiana developmental screening guidelines and what our toolkit uh, that is online offers that you can find at the ldh.la.gov slash dev screen or dev screen toolkit. Either one will take you to our either developmental screening initiative homepage or the toolkit homepage. But with screening always comes referrals, right? The second half to all of this is really making those referrals. And that is often where lots of people have questions. And I see something in the chat. And that is just Ashley being great and posting the link to the toolkit. So the second half of that screening practice really is about making those connections, making referrals. And we've tried to, again, try and simplify, put all of this information together for you. And developed these developmental screening resource guides that we have essentially kind of a cheat sheet for three different topic areas. One being general and social emotional development, another focus specifically on autism, and another on family wellness and barriers to health. And uh, we're going to walk through what you might find on those developmental screening resource guides, which you can all find through the resources page of that link uh, to the developmental screening toolkit. So we have a nice map that kind of outlines all of the regions because we have tried to customize all of the information specific to that region. Uh, often, at least in pediatric and in initial kind of primary care, you may be seeing people predominantly from your region, but maybe from other regions as well, especially if you live on kind of the edge or border of a region. And whereas our kind of more specialized practitioners or specialists often are seeing people from the across the entire state. So we try and include information that is either statewide and local to your area as well. So what you might find, and this is kind of a deconstructed version of it because I wanted to walk you through not only what information you can find, but how you can structure a referral conversation 
around going through this information together. So if you've completed an MCHAT RF and there's an indication of a potential autism spectrum diagnosis that needs further evaluation and uh, referral for services, you would pull this out and be able to say like, we're gonna go through all of this information together <clears throat> and make sure that you and your family have the supports that you need. Uh, because right now we have a screen that is indicating autism spectrum disorder potential, but we know that isn't necessarily a diagnosis. Uh, we know that this means we need some further evaluation. So because of that, we're going to put, make sure to get you on some evaluation lists for those things. But then we're also going to make referrals to early steps and see if we can get you connected there. And what that will do is make sure that we're getting you the services that you need as much as possible and as quickly as possible. So in terms of family resources and what we'd love to connect you with is, you know, families helping families and that making connections with peers in your region can be really beneficial in trying to navigate all of this and have that uh, emotional support in terms of going through this whole process because it can feel very lonely initially. And so making sure that you have those connections and they always have really great webinars to make sure that you're learning as much as you can through this process as well. If you need to get into Head Start, early Head Start, here's the link that we can go through. Also, let's check out the gap map for autism. We'll enter in our zip code and see where the closest providers are to us. Uh, and help identify that. In the meantime, you may like using the VRU map and it helps kind of turn everyday moments into brain building activities because I know that you're, uh, you've expressed concerns about how your child is interacting in a given situation. This can teach you not only how to turn those kind of everyday moments into brain building moments, uh, give you even more information on early childhood development. You know, we use our milestone tracker, and this is how we often talk about developmental milestones together. And it can give you a nice summary of uh, everything that's going on. And you can always find more activities and things to do together. Last but not least, uh, we really like the Sesame Street and Autism app because it gives you kind of interactive routine cards and storybooks and can help you kind of get a better idea of what autism is, given that it's just a um, disorder that impacts how people kind of see the world and interact with the world, and that it is something that your child can learn and grow with. And this particular app is really helpful in kind of giving a lot of that information and examples together. So beyond all of these resources for you all, we also, I want to make sure that you have connections to early steps. And then we will also look up, you know, where and we can get you on the list for an autism evaluation. Uh, if there's another disability that we're working with, we can connect you with Easter Seals of Louisiana to help all of those uh, processes as well. And then below, we have tried to list many of the places who are accepting patients uh, for autism evaluations or provide autism evaluation services. And then always at the bottom, we have the Family Resource Center which really helps provide linkage in terms of, hey, I need to connect X, Y, or Z things. You can email them or call them and uh, help work through any of those things that you might have questions about. And then last but not least, say a child is right at that cusp of going into, you know, third year of life and so therefore would be out of the early step system and would need to have some evaluation from uh, the early childhood 
aspect in the schools, having those connections to the phone numbers or the websites of where we have found the best connections of trying to get a hold of folks in that area so that you can help make those connections. And uh, most importantly, help do those warm handoffs in the office, uh, virtually either sending an email or making a phone call together. And this is really a best practice that you'll hear a lot more about from the Center for Evidence to Practice uh, just in a little bit, but really trying to make as many of those warm handoffs happen in office together as much as possible is uh, one of the best ways that we can ensure that families are getting connected to the services that they need. So that is kind of the main chunk of how we've tried to help you sort it all out in where you can find information, whether you want it at a national level or at kind of a more localized level here with the developmental screening initiative. And so, uh, we will transition into kind of our Q&A section and just want to remind you of kind of what our objectives and goals were for this session of being able to successfully navigate the screening time information for information on screening tools, particularly those beyond what's included in the Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines, being able to navigate and utilize the online training for the Louisiana Developmental Screening Guidelines, particularly our MCHAT uh, trainings and knowing that we have those videos and feel comfortable using a developmental screening uh, resource guide with families after a screen indicates a need for further evaluation or services. Uh, again, happy to answer questions, but if you're like, need to dig into this, uh, heck of a lot more before I have questions, feel free to dive into it. Shoot an email to devscreen at la.gov. That's the best way to get a hold of us. We monitor it every day and we'll get back to you as soon as we can and uh, play around on all of the various websites. With that, Dr. Thornton, thank you so much for your presentation and Scan the QR code or go directly to the link to complete the evaluation for continuing education credits. Thank you for watching. Please reach out if you have any questions.